Guys, it's day seven. 28 days of namastes and you're a week through it. I'm gonna call you my namastayers because you're still with me. What we'll be working with today is perfecting our downward facing dog. And don't be confused, that does not mean that we are really worried about the stretch that it gives us and more concerned about the length of the spine that we are getting as a result of this posture. My teacher Octavio proposes this question at the beginning of our 200 hour teacher trainings. And he asks us, do you wanna be flexible or do you wanna be free? And so a lot of us these days, especially in the West, have yoga now confused with gymnastics. And if we're good at yoga, that means that we can do arm balances and the splits. And if that were the case, then every gymnast would already be enlightened. Every fitness instructor would be in samadhi. And as we know, especially here in LA, that is not the case. <laughs> um, so let's shift our focus on downward facing dog being about pedaling it out, moving it around, doing the splits, reversing and flipping our dogs and all that stuff. What I want us to do today is, yes, get our alignment correct, that's for sure important, but being able to find a, a sense of calm and steadiness in the body. Yeah, really nice and, and steady in the body so that we're not fidgeting and moving around. So our, our stiram and sukam, steadiness and ease. So I'll just demo for you guys downward facing dog first and then I'll talk you guys through it. So we'll start again in that same all fours position that we worked with the other day from fours to childs. So in this all fours positions, we'll just tuck the toes. And from here, you need to just lift the knees, shift the weight back and start lifting your sits bones up to the ceiling. And for me, I'm gonna keep a bend in the knees and for most of us, we will too. And be more um, concerned and prioritize the length of the spine. The gaze will be between the feet Spine is straight and long, and we're externally rotated out through the shoulder joint, dropping the heels towards the floor. And again, being really concerned about the spine being straight. That's where all of our energy runs up, is the spine, and that's our, our pathway towards, towards transformation, towards balance and control. So if the legs need to be bent, then they're gonna be met, not a big deal. Let's be less concerned about the, the stretch of the hamstrings. It's really in, inconsequential when it comes to, to gaining deeper meditation. If we can sit upright with our spine tall for longer periods of time, that is what will deepen our practice ultimately. So go ahead and let's practice a few dynamically and then we'll hold our downward facing dog. So from all fours, hands underneath the the shoulders and point your index finger to the top of the mat and press the tips, the pads of your fingertips into the mat, especially your index finger and your thumb. That alleviates some pressure on your wrists. Keeping the knees underneath your hips, simply tuck the toes. Take a deep breath in here, fine length through your spine. Exhale, lift the knees off of the floor, core engages a little bit. Shift your weight back into the feet, draw your hips with the sits bones up to the ceiling. Bring your chest or your heart to the thighs, drop the heels to the floor, and look between your feet. So the head is heavy, spine is long. Press down on the floor of the hand and spin your armpits forward so your elbow creases face the top of the mat. That way that we're not sinking into the shoulders and we feel lifted and the ears have a lot of space between the shoulders. Take a nice inhale to lower the knees down. Tops the feet to the floor. Exhale, tuck the toes. Lifting the hips up. Dropping the heels down, chest towards the thighs, downward facing dog. Inhale, lower the knees. Gently, slowly back to the earth. Last one, exhale, downward facing dog. And this time we'll stay here in downward facing dog. So I would ask you to refrain from pedaling out the feet, moving around. I'm watching you, I see it. Just be still. 
So here in this stillness with the spine being long as your priority. So bend those knees if you need to. Give that pelvis a little bit of a tilt, hips to the sky. And start being aware of your breath. Inhaling through the nose, long exhale out the nose. And see if you can find a sense of ease here. So there, there is definitely some work that needs to happen in downward facing dog. But rather than gripping tension where we don't need to, see if you can let go a little bit more. Be in the pose and also above it. Breath is fully in your awareness. Maybe even close your eyes here and take three more breaths, staying nice and still. Practicing steadiness, stability, and ease in downward facing dog. This can be quite challenging, especially if this is a new posture for us. So maybe bend the knees a little bit more, keep spinning the armpits forward. And the next time that you exhale, just slowly lower the knees back to the floor. And there you have it. That is a downward facing dog that will keep guiding you down, down the path to meditation, where, where it's at. <laughs> so if you want to go stretch or have your, your flexibility class going on, go ahead and pedal out that dog as much as you want. But when you're practicing with me and our goal is meditation, we're going to get those downward facing dogs so solid, so still, that nothing can shake you out of it. No little twitches of the fingers, no little pedals of the feet. You are in your zone and controlling every movement perfectly conscious. Yeah? All right. Thanks for watching.